Hi friends, we'll try to develop a sample data frame with a date column so we can further use it in our uh, learning of various group by and aggregate functions and all. So for that purpose, similar to this, I will create, try to create it and see that here in this case, we have a column log ID, which is a incremental value. So the first record will have suppose 100, then 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that it will go. So these are the incremental values we'll get. If you have 1000 records, it will also go on incrementing by one by one. Now, the most important is the date column. This date column we are creating by taking the base date as from today and then we are filling it off with backward. So say I want um, uh, say 100 days. So starting from today. But here if I am creating a static uh, data frame, then what happens if I created a data frame and start using of after 10 days, uh, the what is the records for the last week, I may not get it anything because that starts 10 days back. That is why every time we run this co uh, code, every time it will create a fresh data frame from uh, for us with us having a date column starting from today. So that is why you can see the subsequent date. Now similarly, all the three columns are department, activity and equipment. The department is limited to one, two, three, four, four departments or five departments. Similarly, activity is limited. But this from this list randomly the data is taken and build up the list say i want a hundred rows in this data frame so the department out of this five data frames as a sample randomly picked up and filled the hundred rows same thing has happened with activity and equipment also i have a limited five to six equipments but when i when i am going for a big uh, data frame of thousand this out of this five the data is filled up by taking randomly We'll learn all about this. Here we are importing three libraries because uh, date is involved. So we are importing date and time, then our pandas, then we are importing random because we'll be using random numbers to get the data from a list, from the date range, lot of areas. So we are using random here. Now the first variable will declare this how many rows are there or how many date data is required. So I'm saying range. Let's start with 10 anywhere any because this variable value I can change it and extend it further to any number three. Say I want one year, two year, 365 days, 400 days like that. I can change it. So I'm just starting with that and writing it number of rows or date now required. So this will help us in just scaling up. So wherever we want a range to be given, we'll use this number of uh, data is required. So now, now first thing is let's calculate what's the today's date because all our date calculation has to be based from the uh, today's date because say I want to take last 10 days record. So in that way from today, 10 days minus I have to go. And if I am not generating it fresh, then after say 30 days, if I'll search for 10 days day record, then I may not get anything. So for that purpose, we'll always take the current date. So date now equal to what's the today's date? It's the pandas way. There are many ways you can get it. Now date time. Now what I am using is now. So this will give me the date. If you want to print it and see, I'll just now this format will come. Let's just run this and see the output. Here you can see it has come up here. The date is today's date has come up. Now it's not required right now. So I'm removing this. Now what I will do is I will create the first the date column as a list. I will create all the list and then using those list I will create the final data frame. That's what we will be doing. So I'm creating the date list now. So I'm setting PD what I am using is date range. Date range return. This is a this is a method or function available in pandas. So I will here I am giving only the end date. So if once it is end date, the other dates will be backward. If I am giving start date, then it will be a forward most forward date. So I am giving the end date. Which day my end date will be? You can say I have here I the another way of writing the date today. So I am saying date time because I have used the date time here. Now then I will say date now today. Now in that case is just to understand our this line will not required. So we'll comment this. This is another way. So I have given directly or I can write here DT underscore now here. So I got the end date. Now what should be my period? 
this takes the values because previously monthly or what should be the frequency weekly daily like that so here by default it is date so the number of days i am giving range date range is what we are declared it at line number 5 so it will take the value of 10 right now we'll change it subsequently that's all now my uh, date range is dt is ready but I need a list so always remember I need to get the list out of a uh, values we will use the command to list now my list date list is ready let's just run this and what we will do we will just print it and see how this looks print date so let's run this and see here it is let me just yeah you can see the list is comes up here you this list consists of all the dates in a particular format of course in a in last 10 days i can just scale it up by in giving it to let me give it to five days so it will give me the five days data so this has given me the last five days data we'll remove this and because we have to add other department equipment and type of uh, activity all this we have to i'll just create paste a three list here these are the three list you can see that check this is the activity list starts with because the variable names we are given as starts with l so checking cleaning inspection repair this is the activity now department is one two three four four departments are there and equipment is also uh, one three four five seven equipments are there out of these equipments randomly will build up and create our rows so these are the uh, main list or from which we will be building up our uh, our main rows of data so for that let me just first create the activity uh, activity list now this activity list when i am creating i have to take the data from l activity and randomly so i will use here random choice random choice will pick up one every time from a list input list so here I am giving L activity so I picked up one but how many records I will build I will record build because we have defined date range at the top you can see 10 records whatever the value we have set it so now for that I am just saying for I in range which range is DT range so on this range this is what I have defined for sorry for I here for i in range dt range you pick up the activity now let's just see how this list looks like print activity now let's i'm just saving this running it so you can see here but the bottom here repair cleaning here it is cleaning checking pending all this is based uh, up to 10 records 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 records because I have set the value here 10 and the for loop is will, will be I am taking that as input. So it this I will take value from 0 to 9 but it will take 10. So whatever that was that way I have created. Now let me just remove this and copy this one because another two list I had to prepare pasting it here now one more. So this I will make it a department list. So I will set department DEPT. I am doing it now. Here, when I come, I will keep this as L DEPT. So I am picking up from the list above and the rest of the things same. Here also equipment EQPT. From this equipment list, I will to pick up. So here I am saying EQPT. This list I will be using. So saving this. Now you can just check this also okay all the three lists are ready let's create the data frame now because our data are ready so i'll say df is my data frame uh, pd dot data frame now how i will create this okay let me first write the inner things so i am writing my all my list whatever i have developed dt that is my date list now after that let me put my department now activity this list is there activity department activity then equipment you can change but the column name also you have to maintain in same way so deep uh, equipment okay so these are the four things this uh, i have already here i will bring it i will use the zip function 
what this function zip function does it it takes one one element from this four and create a tuple for me so these are all iterative uh, uh, iterator elements so it i can loop through so it picks up one then next one it will go second 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 so four are there so second one of the first de department uh, sorry date then department then activity then equipment and gives me a tuple so like that now i will then use that as a list so because I can give input data input as a list also. So here it is. So my all my data have gone to the data frame now. So you just see this is from this I have created taking one one item I have created a zip then I have gone for the list. Now that that list is a not a single dimension. Imagine it's like a two dimensional list. So that's what but I have to give column names. So I have to give the columns uh columns equal sorry why two gonna yeah columns equal to now what i will give it i will give a list of column i can write it separately and bring it here also okay not big thing only four records dt i am giving whatever you if you want to change the names change it here department now i am saying activity then i am selling equipment that's all so i have given the data data is here and then the column names my data frame is ready now print df let's just check it once i have saved it running yeah here it is my data frame you can see the date department activity equipment it it every time i run this i will have a different uh, this three columns the department and this uh, this uh, activity and the equipment will change now i can even reduce this to let's say small amount five numbers we want to create so i am running it again you can see here this five one two three four five up to five date department activity equipment just remember i will run it again the again the data will change right Note that in our data frame, we have not told pandas that this date, uh, this DT column is a date and time column. So what we are telling him, it says it's panda treated as a string. So for that, we will say that we will explicitly declare it as by using two date, uh, two date and time column. So I am saying DF. I am specifying the column, which column. So DT. Now this is equal to PD two date time now two when i am giving it two date time which one i have to specify df again the same because take this data uh, to put under quotes here yeah okay so now this is a data the, now this is there will not be any difference in the output so let's keep it like that but this is important because all because our intention is to apply this all the date commands grouping and all listing report generation based on this date column so we must tell the panda that treat this as a date column so this is important now we also have one more column at the left where we are giving a log id or a log it's a incremental id means it's its value is starts increasing for a particular one the for first record say it is 100 then next record it will be 101 like that it you if you have uh, earlier if you have studied the sql then in mysql it's auto increment id field and in i think in the sql light it is called id column so it gives a incremental value so now same thing we'll you try to develop it and keep a column like this for that what i am doing now df equal to df dot reset index why i am using reset index what i will do you can see this there is an index at, at your leftmost column here you can see here there is an index by reset index what data frame will do it will remove this and this column it will add it as a column header of index it will tell the column name is index and add that as a column and remove that one now if you want to experiment it or just see this what it affects you can just print this let's print once and for our understanding this is so df equal to df reset now let me run this you can see here what's this this index column is added this is nothing this this line is taken here and the index is name column name is given that we are going to use it so for that purpose here now what i next part we will do is df rename 
what I am renaming? I am renaming a columns. I am saying I am passing a uh, data to the dictionary to the uh, data frame that changing that this index column what is created is rename it as log id just renaming a column only i will just write it here sorry 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 rename the column that's all i am not doing but now what happens this is suppose i want instead of uh, 0 1 2 3 4 I just want it, let it start because uh, I suppose I want to give some the log ID. I cannot start with zero. Let me start with a thousand. So what I will do is now DF. Now it is log ID. Exactly. I have to use log ID equal to now DF dot index. Now this time the index is the leftmost. What you can see at the bottom is this value this 0 1 to this not this though both are equal but this not so df index plus 1000 that's all what will happen is it will take the value add 1000 to it and give the give the log id that value now what i will do i will just let's just check up to this point print df now what happens now is print okay let's just run this and then discuss here you can see a log id of 1000 1001 1002 1003 is added now a log id so because we are creating a sample will be we want that every row should have a unique number of log id usually in a equipment your equipment maintenance system you will have a log id so that is the purpose here and this is the way we can add a incremental uh, incremental value to the particular rows so uh, just i will change this one the better way of looking is look at the head so this will return by default five rows from the it's a sample taken from the data frame here you can see see this is here our records are five so there is no point in using now let me make it thousand so i don't want to display thousand records but i want to display the top five records so i am just head there is a tail also this we have already discussed so here it is showing me why it's a snap or a sample of records whatever we are getting in our data frame so the top sample of five records from the top it's giving me the head because i have i have given it going backward so it is giving me this one because it's starting from today if i want to see the last records i can use tell no, I am seeing you can see the because it started from today backward. You can see the current dates. You can see here it you just see this 26, then it is coming backward, backward. The tail, the bottom most part is here. That's all, friend. This data frame will be using for our various understanding of the date columns. That is the purpose. This sample. This sample code you could download it and keep it. Every time you have run a date date column, any query you want to run it, you create a fresh data frame because since last five days how many records are created means if you have a static data frame then what happens and run it after 10 days you will not get any record that is why this is a dynamic data frame always it gets created with taking the base date from today so you can move forward also so we'll use this for our learning of data frame pandas date columns various date application reports we can generate that's all friend please uh, subscribe to our channel and subsequently whatever the tutorials will be adding you will be notified so press the request you to press the bell notification so you will be allotted whenever we post new new tutorials and we frequently do that and if you have any ideas suggestion comments for us use the comment section below post it there and that will help us in improving also and please share this with your friends and thank you for watching